ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a short review and I'm only focusing on three general things because of what's going on in my apartment. They painted my bathroom finally and the paint is so bad it's giving me bad headaches for the last couple of days. The paint stinks. And this is the reason why this is being done late and this is the reason why it's being done short. So I hope you understand. I'm sorry. But let's get to the show. The first thing I'm going to talk about is EC3 winning against the Mike Bennett. And let's be honest here. EC3 was the best decision they could have made. It is. I did enjoy the opening of the show with EC3 talking back and forth with Mike Bennett at the end of the show. And I got to admit, I didn't see all of the match. I did see some near the end and I saw EC3 win, but I got a bad headache because of the pain. So, I really didn't see all of the match, but it looked like it was a good match. <coughs> Oof. Smelling here is annoying. Oof. But essentially speaking, it was okay. I'm alright with seeing EC3 going to Bound for Glory. I didn't think Mike Bennett was going to win it. And I didn't think if he did win it, Lashley wouldn't eat him alive. It would be really quick. So, I thought before... Um, before the end of the show, before the match happened, I thought something's got to happen for Lashley because Moose came out, beat up EC3 with Mike Bennett. There's got to be something dealing with Lashley. There's got to be something dealing with the titles. And I was right. Eli Drake versus Mike, well, not Mike Storm, James Storm. I'm sorry. I'm not thinking well because I got fumes still in my head. This apartment still stinks. Even after a day and a half, apartment still stinks. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> did I feel like Eli Drake's match was okay? Yes. I admit, I wanted to see the redemption or something different from James Storm. I wanted to see him lose so he would stop drinking and they would do something unique with him. But halfway through the match, I saw some of it. I didn't think he was going to lose. That's James Storm and he did win. But when Lashley came out, I felt it was nice. And Lashley, even though he does still have that little stutter in his talk, I still love this character of him. He, a uh, evil, well not an evil, a heel that is a badass that doesn't need to play around. He just kicks your ass. Kind of like with Kurt, he, the way he used to be, he used to kick your ass and he didn't need to, well he didn't need to pull any type of tricks. Kurt Angle always did it. With his skill more than he did with just acting like a cookie cutter heel. And I'm interested in seeing what they're going to do here. To be honest, seeing that this could be next week and we could have three titles being held by one person for this Bound for Glory will be unique. It also scares me because I'm worried that this Bound for Glory and the subsequent weeks afterward could mean that TNA thinks... Well, the King of the Mountain title sucks. It just doesn't do anything. We're not doing anything with it. So why don't we get rid of it? The X Division, even though people love it, we really don't know how to book it. And we don't have time to book it. So let's get rid of it. Why don't we do a unifying title like the WWE's done? I am so hoping they're not going there. I don't want to see the X Division go away. But to be honest, if you're not doing anything with the... the the title at all and you're not going to put it on explosion like I said X Division on explosion let it be exclusively there and then show it on YouTube if you're if pop is doing explosion and you normally can't get pop for like Americans can't automatically get pop on television why don't you do explosion on pop then release it on your YouTube channel and let people see the X Vision that way. It doesn't hurt anything. But if they're not willing to do that, in some reasons, they have. I kind of understand it. Doesn't mean I agree with it. That we're not doing anything with X Vision. Let's just get rid of it and do a unifying title where everyone has to be under one umbrella. You got the tag titles, and then you got the, unif the, the unifying title, and that's it. And everyone works that way. Because we can't do anything more with it. Finally, which is the most surprising thing of the show, 
Matt Hardy as a vampire. I think I might use that. Hardy the Vampire. Or Vampeel, I may call it. The Vampeel of Matt Hardy. The vampirism or whatever, I can't think of it. Essentially, the storyline that's going now that Jeff has to win the tag belts back and Matt's not going to help him, I thought was different. You don't usually have one guy going after the tag belts by himself. So that actually is very interesting. But then halfway through the match with the two jobbers they got there, you got Matt grabbing a spectator and biting his ass and making him bleed. This is the most unique thing I've seen from any promotion in years. I think the WWE may have done it with the Brood when it came to Edge and Christian. I didn't really see it at that time back in the late 90s. Because I was working at the time and I wasn't watching wrestling at that time as well. So as far as I understood about the Brood, they were like pretty much a vampire team. A, a, a group. So, I know it sounds really bad. Uh, you're talking about the brood and you never saw it. Dude, watch some YouTube. And after seeing this, I may actually watch it. Because now, Matt Hardy is being a vampire. I know you could say, well, dude, wouldn't it be better to have someone else be a vampire than Matt? He's not that great on the mic. His character is not that great. And he's not that great in the ring. He looks stupid with that streak in his hair. So why are you okay with this? Well, let's be honest. I keep saying this. I'm going to be truthful. Matt is a okay talker. He's a okay worker in the ring. And he can pull off an okay persona. Throw something entirely different at him. Yes, he's going to stumble. But you can't honestly tell me seeing this will not get interest. This is a wrestler acting like a fucking vampire. No matter if he's not very good on the mic. No matter he doesn't do a good persona for his character. No matter even if he doesn't do good work in the ring. Something this unique will get him over. No matter how much you don't like Matt Hardy. He's doing something so unique. That it is getting over. And it will get over. All hail Matt. The Vampire. I, gotta, I might use that for my title. I'm seeing it in perspective from something unique from TNA. Particularly that Jeff is the one who wrote, wrote it. Or came up with the idea. This is something we needed. We needed something entirely different. Mind you, we barely had anything from the tag titles. The only thing we saw was Rosemary with Bram, then the knockouts with Bullshit, even though I, Allie, I do love her. I will marry her. She's beautiful. She has a nice body. She's sweet. I'm, I've heard she's a very sweet lady. It, we needed something for Tina, something unique to give us some interest, and this is it. <coughs> Woo. But this is just my point of view. You guys tell me below. I hope you enjoyed the Zane view. Please give me a comment below. Two days in this apartment with a muggy, muggy environment. Kept this smell holding. It's giving me a headache. I hope you understand that this is late. I hope you understand if the smell is still going on because of the mugginess in my apartment. I might not put anything else out for the next couple of days. Hope you understand. Have a good day and have a good night. Peace.